Hello and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where we are going to be running through the Bitcoin charts here and going through the next support and resistance levels to be aware of. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you are doing very well, strapped in and ready for another analysis, which seems actually like quite a long time ago since I last done my public uh, YouTube Bitcoin analysis. Must be a good, coming on a week ago now, it seems, it seems like a very long time, week in crypto is a long time. Uh, so since then, I'll cover the last resistance that we rejected from and what we're heading into now. So ladies and gentlemen, without further said or do, let's get into the analysis. So, as we all know, we have had now we have had now these two big daily levels on the chart for oh, must be coming on over a month now. We've we had our first original daily which was obviously formed around the 22nd of May and obviously this lower daily is back, back from January earlier this year. So, we've had these two major dailies on our charts for a long time and they've obviously maintained the range very well. And what, do, what, what are we looking for when we're trading a range? Obviously, you have your shorts up at the high of the range, longs down at the low of the range. Then within that range, you obviously are going to have your key point, which is generally, generally going to be around the middle of the range. Uh, if you saw Mike's Ethereum update the other day, when you saw my Ethereum update the other day, you know we had that big daily uh, slash key resistance on Ethereum, which was also around the middle of the range. If you took a short around there, it's obviously worked out pretty nicely. Um, but at the end of the day, you can be looking for longs down here and shorts up here. And then the middle of the range is an area where you can either hedge, for example, or, or you know, look for shorts. And in this example, um, you know, this is the way that I like to trade. I obviously have a long from, you know, literally the, the low of the move. So the way that I like to approach my trading is if I've got a, if I've got a very nice long position, and I want to hold that till the top of the range. Of course, this is this could be a scenario where we, we actually break down here and, and we fully break down, for example. Well, if that's the case, I want to have, have my long open, here to take profit, and then if it comes down and stops me out, that's fine. But what I would also simultaneously do is open a short because this was a resistance, and I'll show you what in a minute. But when you also come up to this, you can take your short. So then you are simultaneously in a long position if you're like me, from pretty much the exact low. And you can also then simultaneously hold a short position. How do you do this? Uh, well, on Bybit, you would have to trade uh, Bit Bitcoin USD, uh, perpetual swaps and expirational futures, or just trade USDT on Bybit, where you can obviously hold longs and shorts at the same time. It's called hedge mode. So there's a few different options you can do that on the exchange. But overall, it comes down to, you know, having this bit of, uh, I, I think this comes with time and experience, whereas most people might think, what's the point in holding a long and a short at the same time? Whereas ask a professional trader what they're going to say. And well, the answer is clearly it's a form of hedging. And also it's just an extremely good trading strategy. If you can be holding longs from the lows and then a hedge from resistance, or alternatively, have let's say you have a short from up here and a long from down here, what would be the point when you're back at the lower the range in closing that short when there's the potential of breaking down? In the EG, what would be the point of closing your long here when there's the potential of still going up? So until you see that sign of confirmation, which could be coming over the point of control, which could be reclaiming some major levels of resistance to support, I feel it's good to remain hedged. And I'm sure this is a little bit too complex for some people, but it's really not that difficult when you have a bit of a grasp on the market. It really isn't. And it's just a really good way of trading. Uh, so I do hold... Uh, long still from the lows because I've had no real reason to close this at the moment and I'm going to cover the support that I'm looking at currently to see this held and I also hold a short so you know I'm, I'm in the two positions at the moment uh, waiting to see some clarity coming out of this position right here so you might say what was the resistance you're up against right now uh, and I will cover that for you and then I'll cover the support that we're going on to here, which I feel is a very, very, very important support. Um, first thing I'll say to be aware of, because a lot of people have been questioning, like, where do we go for your serious analysis? If you want to just pause and read this, places where you go for serious analysis, the Champions live streams, streams done by the coaches. Obviously, Mike has already done a live stream this morning. And this is obviously only for contenders and champions, but he's already done a live stream today. The trading assistant voice chat. He does, he's doing daily uh, voice chats at the moment. Uh, he'll have another one later today, I'm sure. Bitcoin, bar, and the charts only. This is serious. And obviously the all-star post. Places where you do not 
go for serious technical analysis is Twitter and general chat. So I want to put this out here so everybody can see. This is now pinned, obviously, in the in the group. Big, big thing to remember. You do not go to these places for serious technical analysis. I would also I suppose we could add number six. The YouTube videos like this that I'm doing now is a serious technical analysis. But I just wanted to remind you all of this one before we continue. Because <laughs> I think some people are like, oh, Daniel, you're bullish and then bearish on Twitter. Well, wow, this is really confusing. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, do not trade off of Twitter. I'm just saying, do not trade off of Twitter. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, we've done all the hard work in here. Twitter's a very bit of fun. Uh, so yeah, coming back to the charts, what did we bang into here? Well, let's pull, I'll give you a guess, two minutes, well, 10 seconds to decide. What Fibonacci level could have we hit into here? What is our most favorite Fibonacci that we love to trade off of? Well, of course, it is the CC, ladies and gentlemen. When we pull our Fib from the high up here down to the low, you can see that we come right into this Fibonacci CC level. And what was brilliant about this is you also took these highs for a swing failure pattern. So you can see this was the last high here of consolidation before the drop. We come back up into the CC, taking those highs, swing failure, and obviously a decline. So th this is this is uh, one of a few different factors of resistance that we had. Also, this was back on the 29th, alerting my group to what we were coming up into. Obviously, we had that CC, but you can also see here we had negative Fibonacci levels daily, range point of controls, uh, basically a lot of levels of resistance all around this point. E.g., a very high term time frame resistance to be aware of. Um, and a lot of people, at the, you know, well, some people at the moment are saying, Dan, you like you're not giving much updates. It's kind of like you know, one update a day. The thing is, you have to remember this, in my opinion, this range is, you do not need to overtrade this. I think if you're giving one trade a day, you do not need to be taking more than this. Like you have really simply longs off the low, range low, shorts off the range high, and then your, you know, high probability trades within the range, they're not happening, you know, five times a day. So you have to be very careful with the trades you're taking. Otherwise, I do believe, yes, you can get chopped up. So if you are sticking to these high probability trades, there isn't a lot of them coming every single day. And for me, this was obviously a high probability trade. We had, a, you know, five different factors of, of confluence for the, for the short. And you can see here, obviously my post within the group, if I just hide myself a second, I'm not posting like every day. Again, this is a serious place of analysis. Like, we last had updates from the 24th, coming into the 27th, when we were obviously still in the daily range. We knew that our resistance is above. And this was a little bit earlier in the day, saying that we still had nice scop longs. So this would have been, you know, still at 1 p.m. Then we obviously did make our way up another, you know, 500 to $1,000, coming into the CC, rejecting from that CC, and well, rejecting even further from that CC. So I'm only really posting when it's necessary. That I, I think... You know, I might as well just, there's no point in me posting a thousand times a day. I'm just going to post when I need to post. And so the last update that I gave was, this is again to the group, but nevertheless, um, post is, we're coming up into the CC. Do not forget, this is the resistance that we have been waiting for. We obviously came up into that and we've got a strong pullback coming on 10%, I believe. Now this is about coming on a 10% pullback. Yeah, pretty much a 10% pullback. So, the, you know, you've got to be aware of these levels, whether you're shorting this, whether you're hedging this or whether you're taking profits on the longs. This is a massive, massive, massive level that you've got to be aware of. And again, it ended in a swing failure pattern of that last high. So you, in the end, it was you know, let's just say exactly as preferred, <laughs> uh, exactly as preferred short. So, um, you know, then that brings us up to them after talking you through what we had here. Oh, actually one little bonus, one little bonus for the people in the group. Um, last night, we obviously go through the merging of the ranges. That was also the merged range. Remember, this is changing every day. The volume is going to change every day. But we also came up into at the time, the point of control. So, yeah, shout out for the people that were in the TPO video yesterday. This is the merge of the whole range. And you also had that point of control up and around there. And again, remember, this is changing every day. These values are changing every day. Uh, but that's a nice little bonus to show you that we also had that coming in as resistance at the time. So, uh, yeah, that's that's that covered. So what are we at now then? If we drop it down a little bit of a time frame now. Um, well, in my opinion, we are coming back into a high volume node. Okay, so we're coming back into the high volume node here, which we're actually currently trying to bounce off of on the lower term time frames. You will see this, um, you know, about this $33,000. So you are entering, in my opinion, support, 
especially for the intraday at around 33,000. I would say it's coming in a little bit bigger at 32,000, but this thousand dollar zone, 32,000, 32,500 to 33,000. This is obviously your support for the intraday. Um, in my in in my in my opinion, like if you lose this, then obviously it's a lot more not necessarily bearish per se, but more likely that you're coming down to the daily once again. So this is obviously an important little zone here that we could say of support. Again, I would not short into support, but people can do whatever they want. Uh, this is obviously, in my opinion, a, an area where one would look for longs. Don't have to take one, but you would look for longs here because the time to look for shorts is here. Yeah, this is just like this is the thing that kind of I you know, it kind of, I just find it a bit funny because I would always say this is a bad time to short. Like, why would you short into support? But then I always get the comments of people, if it goes down even further, like, they're like, ha, I shorted here and I've made money. It's like, okay, great. Uh, you know, if you should put short support 10 times, well, maybe you get lucky this time and it just goes straight through and you win one trade out of 10. But being a consistent trader, you short resistance. Yeah. You do not short support again this is intraday support i'm not saying it's a massive 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 support level but intraday it's it's a support okay obviously bigger coming in back at the lows but this is a potential reversal zone and again in my opinion this is coming off of a lovely high volume you know? you're obviously coming back into of course the reverse cc so as we saw resistance here is um you know cc resistance you're going to have the reverse as support now so of course it's a nice intraday support level no um does it have to hold of course not uh but you know, it's just like you do not look for shorts down here and unless you're like a breakout trader and then good luck. Um, <laughs> I'm not a breakout trader. This is not how I teach people in the group. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I'll just say that. So yeah, that, that, that then really brings us up to, OK, we have pretty important support at, say, $32,000. We have that pretty important resistance, about $37,000. OK, and then I think then it's just it's just really is a thing of being patient now, like be a patient trader. Like I'm not here saying there's really good sculpt trades. I'm not saying there isn't any sculpt trades, but I'm just saying I don't feel that this is an environment that is suited for sculpt trades at the moment. I feel this is a nice nice range. We have a very clearly defined low. We have a very clearly defined high. And patience is such a major factor of this range because if you are taking, if you are over trading, revenge trading, jumping in, jumping out, you know, getting bearish at support, getting bullish at resistance, it's just like, Take a step back, take a deep breath, and just remember, we've been in this range over a month. Yeah? If you have successfully longed each touch of the lows, you've won every single trade. If you've successfully shorted each touch of resistance, you've won every single trade. Of course, at some point, this is going to break up or it's going to break down. But what you have to remember is if you have successfully traded the range thus far, you're walking away with, even when it breaks, a 90 plus percent win rate because we've had 10 trades uh it will come come to 10 trades so you know that, that that's the thing that you have to bear in mind right now if you have been a patient trader if you have been a you know pretty consistent on this range even when it breaks and let's say you take that final loss you still have to remember it's a 90 percent or more if it continues win rate and that's what you're after you're after the consistency you're after this for the long term you're not after quick gains if you're after quick gains you, i think you're going to get wrecked this is the, this, you know, trading is for the long term It is really at the end of the day, a market that's not really designed to get get rich quick. Although many people might think it is. It really isn't. If, if you've got the wrong mindset going into trading, I think you'll lose everything. To, to be honest, I do think you'll lose everything. So it will comes down to patience. It's a big part of it. it comes down to having a plan. Uh, like I wrote in the group yesterday. Here's a little quote to end with, I suppose. Um <laughs> There you go. Nice little quote here. Placing a trade is straightforward and simple, but you have to do your analysis to make sure that the trade has a high success rate. Analysis and patience make up 99% of the work. Placing a trade is the remaining 1%. E.g. be patient, wait for the high probability trades. You know, get your setups ready. Trading is actually only 1% of the game. Pressing that buy and sell button is a very small 1% of the game. The biggest part of this game is having a plan, is doing the analysis, and then having the patience to wait for that to come to fruition. Eh? Um, so yeah, that, that's really my update of today. Talked you through the resistance. And again, this is 
Um, this is uh, obviously only talking about it now in the public, but this was called way in advance before it hit in the group. And so this was a very clearly defined resistance. I think Mike done a live stream on the day this was happening. Uh, trading assistant was obviously doing his voice calls. Mike's done a live stream this, this morning talking through in a bit more depth than I have here, but what's happening right here. And it's just like, okay, we know our levels of support next, which I've pretty much given you here, which in my opinion is just 32 to 33. If you lose this, I think you come down to the daily, but this is obviously support as it stands. If lost, look for lower. And this is obviously a big resistance, of obviously up at the CC, but we've already hit it once. The more times you test this, of course, the weaker it gets. Um, is there any final words that I want to add here? No, I don't think so. If you want to see more, obviously, you know, I, I feel that this, uh, you know, if you want to see more, then obviously chartchampions.com. For the people that are content with this on the free stuff, then hey, hope you've enjoyed the update. Thank you ever so much, everybody. Have a brilliant day. And... Uh, yeah, enjoy trading this. Like at the end of the day, trading should be a joy. You should come into the markets every day feeling happy, excited, and just, you know, looking forward to that day. If you're coming into the markets thinking, oh my God, like if you educate yourself, learn, make some plans and, you know, have some fun with us. Have some fun with us. Trading should be a joy. And it really is at the moment because this is such a brilliant range. So yeah, if you're feeling depressed and sad about this, Come and learn from us and, and we'll, we'll change your opinion on the market. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day and goodbye. Oh, no, no, no financial advice. Of course, nearly forgot to end with this. This video is entertainment, educational only. No financial advice. Have a brilliant day. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. And now this is finally goodbye.